1648, Ukraine erupted in a massive revolt against centuries of Polish domination. The rebellion was led by the outstanding Cossack leader, or Hetman, Bogdan Khmelnytsky. While not entirely successful, it established a Cossack state known as the Hetmanate, which existed in central and eastern Ukraine from the mid-17th to the mid-18th century. Part of the price paid by the Hetman state for its foundation was recognition of the Muscovite Tsar's suzerainty with unforeseen consequences for its autonomy. For over half a century, the capital of this Cossack Hetman state was Baturin. The town is located northeast of Kyiv, on the high south bank of the same river in Chernihiv Oblast. The same and its tall steep terraces once provided a natural defense for the town. In the 11th century, the princess of the Chernihiv Principality built a fortress on a plateau above the high river bank. The town name of Baturin first appears in documents from the early 17th century. The ruling Poles had erected the Baturin castle protected with ramparts and wooden walls on the site of the earlier princely era defenses. This reconstruction of a Cossack fort on display at the Periaslo Khmelnytsky Ethnographic Museum gives an idea of the appearance of 17th century earthen and wooden fortifications in the mid Dnieper region. The Ukrainian Cossacks wrested control of Baturin from the Poles in 1648 during the Khmelnytsky Rebellion, and the town became a mid-level administrative and military center of the newly established Hetman state. It was part of the Chernihiv and Nizhen Cossack Regiment or county. Baturin found itself caught in the whirlwind of the struggle to develop the Ukrainian Cossack polity. In 1658, Hetman Ivan Vyhovsky defeated a 100,000-strong Muscovite army near Baturin at Konotop as he attempted to loosen the growing Russian control over Ukraine. In 1669, Hetman Demyan Mnohohrishny and the Cossack Starshena, or officer class, moved the Hetman's residence northeast from Chehrin to Baturin. This Hetman and his successor Ivan Samoylovich constructed a large fortress, 24 hectares in area, in the town. In the Hetman era, Baturin had a castle or citadel, the outer town within the fortress walls on fortified suburbs and the Podil, or lower town. The villas and manors of the Cossack elite, as well as monasteries, were scattered throughout the surrounding area. It has been suggested that this 17th century icon of the crucifixion from the neighboring town of Bakhmach depicts Baturin at that time. The town and its environs occupied an area of approximately 100 hectares and had a population of about 20,000. In 1654, Baturin was granted Magdeburg law, providing it with municipal self-rule. The citadel and fortress were protected by ramparts with wooden fences, towers, bastions, and moats. One can see the remnants of the round earthen bastions, as well as the excavations of the fortress's rampart atop the river terrace. The earthen and wooden defenses of this Chernihiv fortress built in the late 17th century represent an analogy to those in Baturin. The famous Krupitsky St. Nicholas Monastery is situated eight kilometers from Baturin. The relics of St. Barbara were once preserved there. In 1680, General Judge Ivan Domontovich commissioned the Cathedral of St. Nicholas to be built at this monastery. Its closest counterparts are the Cathedral of St. George at the Vidubichi Monastery in Kyiv and St. Catherine's Church in Chernihiv. In Stalin's time, the Cathedral of St. Nicholas of the Krupitsky Monastery were demolished and the monastery's other structures then fell into disrepair. Baturin reached the peak of its development during the Hetmancy of Ivan Mazepa from 1687 to 1708. Under his 21-year rule, the Hetman state enjoyed economic prosperity, cultural growth, and political stability. The Hetman was a patron of the Orthodox Church, education, architecture, and arts in Ukraine. 
At his own expense, he constructed 12 new churches and restored 20 others in addition to the erection of several palaces, monastic buildings, collegiums, and fortifications. The most renowned among them are the Chernihiv Collegium and the Trinity Cathedral in Chernihiv, the Cathedral of the Mahar Transfiguration Monastery near Lubny, the Kiev and Mohila Academy, St. Sophia and St. Michael's Golden Domed Cathedrals in Kiev, as well as the Ascension Cathedral, and the Holy Trinity and All Saints churches over the gates of the Kiev and Monastery of the Caves. Mazepa's coat of arms have been preserved on the walls and architectural elements of these edifices. Hetman Mazepa also built up and embellished his capital. In 1692-1696, he commissioned Baturin's main church, the Trinity Cathedral, as well as the churches of St. Nicholas, the Resurrection, the Intercession, and the Presentation of the Virgin. Regrettably, all of them were ruined during the attack by Russian troops on the Hetman capital. The sole 17th century structure that has survived in Baturin to the present day is the Kuchube Mansion. It now houses the Hetman Capital Historical Museum. In 1698, it became the property of General Judge Vasil Kuchube, who denounced Mazepa to the Russian Tsar and was later executed by the Hetman. Kuchube's beautiful daughter, Motria, fell in love with the widower Hetman. This is a photograph of her portrait. Its original is preserved in a Swedish museum. After the execution of her father, Motria entered a monastery near Poltava and died soon thereafter. This church at the village of Dekanka in the Poltava region was the mausoleum of the Kuchube family. Mazepa reinforced the military arsenal of Baturin. The Hetman's artillery included over 70 cannons. The largest of Mazepa's cannons, nicknamed the Lion, was carried off to Moscow as a war trophy and can now be seen in the Kremlin. These are cannonballs, weapons, and Mazepa's sword from the collections of the Baturin and Chernihiv historical museums. The decorative ceramic tiles from the 17th and 18th centuries excavated in Baturin are fine pieces of art. They bear reliefs with floral and geometric patterns as well as representations of birds, mythical creatures, Cossacks, knights, or cherubs. These motifs were borrowed from Ukrainian folk art, church iconography, and Western European Baroque painting or relief sculpture. The more sophisticated of these tiles were covered with bright multicolored glazing. The tiles adorned heating stoves or fireplaces in the Hetman's palaces as well as houses of the Cossack officer class and well-to-do burghers. In the Hetman period, Baturin was a leading center of ceramic production and the manufacturing of highly ornamented tiles. In addition to the impressive local wares, imported highly artistic Dutch tiles were used for the embellishment of the Hetman's palaces in the 18th century. One can see ceramic Cossack pipes and various pottery from this time. The numerous finds of 17th and 18th century Polish, Dutch, Swiss, and Russian silver and copper coins testify to the international trade contacts of the Hetman's capital. During Mazepa's reign, Baturin became one of the most important towns in Ukraine. Various crafts, commerce, culture, education, scholarship, and spiritual life flourished there. And the notion and structures of a Ukrainian polity were developing. The general secretary of Mazepa's administration was the famous Pilip Orlik, a future emigre hetman and the author of the first Ukrainian constitution. The superior of the Krupitsky monastery was the distinguished churchman and writer Saint Dmitro Tuptalo, the author of a very popular daily Menaean, or collection of the lives of saints. The news of the ravaging of Baturin in 1708 shook him deeply, and he died a year later. Mazepa founded a secular school in Baturin, the so-called Chancellery Company, for the training of diplomats, treasurers, jurists, and other upper echelon civil servants of the Hetman state. The town's growing fortunes experienced an abrupt downturn during the Northern War between Sweden and Russia, 
Hetman Mazepa and his followers sought to use this situation to free Ukraine from Muscovy's growing domination. He formed a secret alliance with the Swedish King Charles XII, who promised broad autonomy for the Hetman state under nominal Swedish control. After Mazepa and his troops sided with the Swedes, Russian Tsar Peter I ordered his Marshal Alexander Menshikov to destroy the Hetman capital. While Mazepa stayed in the Swedes' camp, he left behind a sizable Cossack garrison, powerful artillery, and large stores of arms and provisions in Baturin. The sturdy fortress withstood the assault of Menshikov's mighty army, and the enemy retreated. A local trader, however, subsequently showed the Russian troops the location of a secret tunnel leading into the stronghold. On November 2, 1708, they used it to break into the town and kill all its defenders. Menshikov's soldiers also massacred the bulk of the civilian population, looted and burned down the Hetman capital as a punitive measure against the rebellious Mazepa and his supporters. Researchers have estimated that about 15,000 people perished in the fall of Baturin. The residents of Baturin have maintained, however, that the number of townsfolk and Cossacks slain there totaled 21,000. Russian troops also dumped the corpses of many of Baturin's dead into the same river, together with rafts carrying crucified or impaled Cossack officers. They floated down the same to the Desna and then the Dnieper through the Ukrainian heartland. This demonstrative savage reprisal on the Hetman capital was intended to terrify and pacify the insurgent population of Ukraine. In the following year, 1709, the Russians defeated the Swedish army and its Ukrainian Cossack allies at the crucial Battle of Poltava. Charles XII, together with Mazepa, Orlik, and remnants of their troops fled to Moldova. Later in the year, the 70-year-old Mazepa died in the Moldovan town of Bendere. After its fall, Baturin stood deserted for about 40 years. It was only in 1750 that the town came back to life, largely due to the efforts of the last of the Ukrainian hetmans, Kirill Rozumovsky, who restored Baturin as the hetman's residence. In some ways, Kirill Rozumovsky's political strategy harkens back to Ivan Mazepa's political objectives. Rozumovsky sought to revive the Cossack state and to modernize its capital, which he planned to re-establish in Baturin. The enlightened hetman intended to establish a university in Baturin. In 1764, however, the autocratic Russian Empress Catherine II abolished the autonomous Ukrainian Hetman state in the course of her consolidation of the Russian Empire. Baturin again lost its status as the Hetman capital. Hetman Rozumovsky abdicated but nevertheless resided in Baturin and continued building monumental structures there until the end of his life. In the late 18th century, he commissioned a magnificent palace in the classicism style designed by the prominent Scottish architect Charles Cameron. In 1789, the former Hetman erected the Cathedral of the Intercession, according to a design by the Italian architect Giacomo Quarenhi. It was later demolished by Soviet authorities. In 1803, Rozumovsky constructed the Church of the Resurrection, and he was buried in its crypt. Presently, it is Baturin's main church. A marble sepulchral monument to the last hetman, a piece by the renowned Ukrainian sculptor Ivan Martos, once stood in the church. In 1927, Soviet officials removed this tombstone from the Church of the Resurrection, as well as valuable items from the Rozumovsky grave. Parts of this monument have been preserved in the collections of the Chernihiv and Baturin museums. There are plans to reconstruct this burial monument at its original place of honor in the Church of the Resurrection in recognition of Ukraine's last hetman. Following Rozumovsky's death in 1803, the town gradually declined. Today, it is a small, semi-agrarian provincial town with a population of 4,000. The Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies in particular, its Kowalski program for the study of Eastern Ukraine is very proud to sponsor the Baturin excavation project. And I, as a historian of the Hetman state, understand its significance and am personally pleased that such a project exists.
In 2002, the remnants of a fine five-room house were excavated on the site of the Baturin fortress near the Church of the Resurrection. It belonged to a member of the Cossack officer class, possibly a colonel from Mazepa's time. This year, we have uncovered a large structure with an area of approximately 100 square meters. It was built and used in the early 18th century. The walls of this dwelling were made of wood. The floor was constructed of whole bricks set over a layer of crushed bricks mixed with clay. A fragment of the brick flooring has been preserved along the wall. The remains of a massive stove were found in one room. It was adorned with ornamented ceramic tiles. The edifice was covered with a costly glazed ceramic roofing tile. In all likelihood, the house lost its inhabitants as a result of the decimation of Baturin in 1708. After being abandoned, it fell into disrepair and then collapsed onto itself. In the summer of 2002, the expedition's main object of research was the remnants of the Hetman's palace in the Baturin citadel site. It was commissioned by Hetman's Mnohorishny and Samoylovich. This main state structure of the town was ransacked and burned in 1708. Archaeologists have unearthed the remnants of the brick floor pavement, the ruins of brick walls, several fragments of the foundations built of broken bricks and rubble poured over with a lime mortar, the foundation trenches, and the lower parts of two large tiled heating stoves. The northern corner of the foundation with a massive pilaster was discovered. Such pilasters articulated the facades of the palace and were a typical constructive and decorative element of the buildings in the style of the Ukrainian Baroque. Excavations have established that the palace had only one story, a ground floor, and was rectangular in plan. It ran lengthwise along the edge of a high bank of the same. It was up to 24 meters in width and almost 36 meters in length. A central corridor divided the edifice into two parts. The larger section contained offices and the Hetman's private living quarters. The kitchen and storage areas were probably located in the smaller section. The facade of the palace facing the river may have had a gallery or porch. In all likelihood, this palace was constructed in the Cossack Baroque style. Its closest analogies are the office of the Cossack regiment in Chernihiv and the so-called Mazepa House in the Pudil district of Kyiv, now the home of the Museum of the Hetmanate. Alongside the Hetman's palace in Baturin stood Mazepa's stone treasury. It is plausible that its runes are shown on this mid-19th century engraving. Excavation site number seven is situated in the midst of the territory occupied by the Baturin citadel. It represents an extension of the archaeological sites of the previous years where we managed to unearth over 20 graves from the Hetman period. Accounts from the 18th century provide us with a great deal of information about the wooden church of the resurrection, which stood on the territory of the citadel. This year, we were successful in discovering the remnants of this church's foundations, namely its foundation trench and a brick rubble base supporting a pillar or possibly the altar of this church. Unfortunately, because of the limited extent of the fieldwork season and the small scope of this excavation site, we were unable to uncover all the remnants of this spacious church structure. We would like to accomplish this during next year's field season. The expedition continued to investigate Mazepa's country residence in the Honcharivka suburb, east of Baturin. His villa was fortified with a rampart, moat and bastions. Here, in 1700, the Hetman commissioned a large palace and a domestic wooden church. These buildings were also destroyed during the Russian army's onslaught on Baturin. The foundation trenches, scattered brick materials and pieces of the mortar are all that is left of the palace. Archaeological excavations of the remains of its foundations have established that it was rectangular in shape and approximately 15 by 30 meters in dimension. It was a large, multi-story structure with a basement. This palace is probably the one depicted in this mid-18th century drawing from the National Museum in Stockholm. The sketch shows that Mazepa's country palace had three floors and that its architecture and facade decoration were executed in a Western Baroque style. There is a hypothesis that the wooden church at Mazepa's villa was a rotunda located about 17 meters to the west of the palace. A round hollow eight meters in diameter can be observed there. 
The extant church of St. Paraskeva, built at Busk in the Lviv region in 1708, provides an example of such a wooden rotunda. However, exploratory digs carried out at the bottom of this hollow have revealed a considerable amount of brick fragments and fractions of lime mortar. The possibility that a different type of structure stood there, therefore, cannot be dismissed. Further excavations of this object next year will determine its true nature. In various parts of the Baturin territory, archaeologists have discovered many human remains, mainly of elderly men, women and children. Most were identified as casualties of the attack on the town by Tsar's troops. Several of the skeletons bear the signs of a violent death. Near the palace site in the Baturin citadel, earlier research uncovered remains of an aged woman with a smashed skull. On her chest lay a gilded copper icon of the Mother of God holding an infant Christ. It was fire damaged. In the ruins of the superstructure of the Hetman Palace, the 2002 excavations unearthed the skeletal remains of a mature individual whose leg bone was chopped off. A considerable number of human skulls and skeletons were also found in fragmentary states, without the remnants of coffins or burial pits. Apparently, they belonged to the victims of the massacre, who had remained unburied. In 2001, archaeologists excavated 16 graves from the 17th and early 18th centuries in the cemetery of the ruined wooden church of the Resurrection and near the site of the Hetman Palace in the citadel. Eight of them contained remains of elderly people who died during Baturin's prosperous times, that is, before 1708. An examination of their bones revealed no indication of a violent death. Archaeologists determined, however, that eight children who were buried there clearly perished in the course of the tragedy of 1708. Their corpses had been placed in shallow burial pits. The remnants of coffins and ornaments were almost entirely absent in these graves. It seems that the burials were hastily executed in the turbulent period of hostilities in the wake of the town's total devastation. Moreover, the earth used to fill the children's grave pits included some building remnants and charcoal from the nearby Hetman Palace, indicating that it was burnt down before these burials were made. This archaeological evidence testified that these eight children were buried soon after the destruction of Baturin by Menshikov's army. One of the buried youths had a bullet hole in his skull. Researchers believe that these women and children took refuge in the citadel and the Hetman's masonry palace during the storming of Baturin. There, they shared the tragic fate of the town's defenders. In his poem, The Great Vault, or Veliki Loch, Ukraine's national bard Taras Shevchenko invokes the spirit of a young Baturin girl to describe the slaughter taking place in the fallen Hetman's palace. I was still a thoughtless girl when glorious Baturin was fired by Moscow in the night, and both old and young she took and drowned them in the same, and I fell right in the very palace of Mazepa, lay among the corpses. Near, my sister and my mother murdered in each other's arms, lying there beside me. When the research on the remains of the massacred was completed, a local Ukrainian Orthodox priest performed a memorial service for them. The graves were then filled in. <coughs> Occasionally, when the Baturin residents were digging up their plots, I witnessed the fact that the remains of people who undoubtedly had been murdered were found. They had been buried face down. Perhaps their bodies were simply tossed into some pit. Furthermore, there were two skulls with bullet holes in the temples. This shows that there is a real need to conduct research in Baturin. We need more archaeological digs here. It is clear that Baturin is a large mass grave. We anticipate that further excavations at Baturin and the collection of information from local residents will help discover the mass graves of the Cossacks who sacrificed their lives in defending the Hetman capital. Today we can confidently state that Paturin is no longer a total blank page in history. 
And yet, despite the fact that research on it, which was impossible in Soviet times, has been going on for seven years now, thanks to financial support from the Ukrainian diaspora in Canada and America, we have been able to excavate only less than 1% of the town's areas. The secrets of Baturin are still waiting to be discovered. Its exploration must not only continue on an annual basis, but also be expanded. In Baturin, Kozak Hetman traditions are being revived. The Baturin Kozak Regiment and Kozak Soul Folk Choir have been founded. Every year a festival of Kozak glory is held on June 9th. On November 2nd, the day of the tragic destruction of the Hetman capital, those who perished in Baturin are commemorated. We must recognize two issues. Firstly, we should honor the memory of the 15,000 Cossacks and town dwellers who were slain in Baturin. Ask yourselves, where is there even a single grave from 1708? None remains. Secondly, we ought to memorialize the Honcharyuka villa site where Ivan Stepanovich Mazepa lived and worked. In 1997, the talented Chernihiv sculptor Henadi Yershov prepared several impressive models for Mazepa Memorial Monuments. To date, none have been realized due to a lack of funding. There is a tight bond between Baturin and the Ternopil region in Galicia, which was the home of the distinguished Ukrainian writer Bohdan Lepki. He penned the renowned trilogy Ivan Mazepa, which is one of the most popular books in Baturin. In 1999, a monument to Bohdan Lepki was erected near the Baturin Museum. It is likely the only monument to this author in central and eastern Ukraine. No lord, no tsar, no khan will sit in the place of our hetman. Never. Poem by Bohdan Lepki, The Runes of Baturin.